<laughs> Are we ready? Is it playing? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Lonely Man's Podcast, fastest growing podcast in the world. Still 189 subscribers on YouTube. Very sad right now. We're trying to get to 1,000 before the end of the year. Please hit that subscribe button, everybody. Smash it. We should uh, make one of those little things that we put in there that it pops up and it says like and subscribe. I think I got one of those. I'll throw yeah. it in there right yeah. here. <laughs> right Over there. There. Ben Basanga is still with us. Yo, we got a special guest here. Uh, we do. We got our friend got Katie Felton in the house, everybody. Hello. Hey. Hello, 184? 89. 89. 89. Oh, oh, sorry. Come on. Sorry, five people I forgot about. <laughs> we had 184 like six months ago. We <laughs> have <Yeah>. five <laughs> subscribers yeah. since then. One a month, right? So oh. by, we'll be at 190 by February. Don't well, yeah. you'll yeah. have 190 here so, in the next You're going to smash that subscribe? Day. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. I'll I'll help you guys. Let me do out. let me do a live check on the subscribers. Maybe it's gone up. No, one eighty nine <laughs> still holding you strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got four minutes. That's the average listen time. So okay, I, I did. Uh, just kidding. I don't know if that's real. <laughs> I did Caleb Ogden's podcast last week, and all we talked was analytics. And then I gave him my YouTube analytics app after the podcast, and he said we have really good retention and watch time. Really? Oh, for a that's small podcast. Impre- Way to go, everybody! So, you know, I like oh, to yeah. think we're growing grassroots style. You know, like a we grassroots are. movement. We got a hardcore twenty-five yeah. people that listen audio only, and then I don't know what's going on on YouTube. We can't catch the algorithm wave. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. um. Just, I did get my degree in advertising yes. and not to make more p- problems for you guys, but it is called Lonely Man. So maybe you should rename it to Mans with Lots of Friends that <laughs> also want to subscribe <laughs> to podcasts. I thought the the OnlyFans parody logo would catch people's attention. <laughs> Maybe they're like, I'm a lonely man. I don't need any more of them in my life. <laughs> I, Katie, I think you're onto something here. Right? Uh, ben, we're rebranding. I don't know what we're going to be called next week, but it's going to be way... Yeah. We're going to be the holy man, but with hoes. You know what I'm saying? And we'll put a hoe, a holy man, a tool in the logo, or maybe like an actual hoe. I haven't decided yet. Yeah. I like the holy that. mans. Oh, I thought it was holy mans. Holy. We were, we were going to get all the... Because like, oh. religion's coming back now. Oh, so. should, okay, I got an idea. Well, yeah. Hear me out. Yeah. Spell it. Holy man's like a holy, yeah. but we're dressed like priests, mm-hmm. but we got a bunch of badass bitches dressed like nuns in the logo. Now it, the, Ooh, we're, that's okay. like ho. We don't have a bitches budget on this podcast. We don't yet. have a bitches budget. We gotta yeah. monetize. But you know, we don't fake it till we make it. We'll find some. Yeah, listen, <laughs> <laughs> we, we we gotta start with those where there is no vision, the people will perish, yeah. dog. We gotta have a vision. We'll do like right? Andrew Tate. He started with one webcam girl and then <laughs> built a whole. Uh, and then he beat her into convincing her exactly. friends. But yeah, built a whole sex trafficking empire <laughs> off that one woman held you against know? her will yeah, you and know? one year you'll have a thousand subscribers and charges against you for human <laughs> trafficking I mean, if you don't have charges against you or you really make it in life yeah. everybody has charges against them now like will smith's got charges against them everyone's got charges Nona Ryder has charges. <laughs> you're, you're, Felicity <laughs> Huffman spent time behind bars. That's true. Martha Stewart's a straight up felon. True. You're Everyone's right. got charges. I don't got no charges. Donald got no Trump has credibility. charges and he's president, bro. Hunter Biden's got charges. Yeah. Everyone's oh. got charges. Katie, dog. have you ever been arrested? Nope, never. I'm too scared of everything. <laughs> what's the close? <laughs> what's the most trouble you've ever been in in your entire life? Hey, like, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> You're grounded. It was pretty. It was close to that. Uh, and I think any the only thing that comes top of mind is in college they were building a dorm across from my dorm, and they just like kept the construction area open mm-hmm. so me and my friends were like we'll explore this sounds fun Ooh, urban exploration yeah, yeah wild um and rebel I, behavior right exactly super crazy uh and somebody saw us in a building and was like oh no there's people in the dorm and the police came like full ready to capture us because they thought we were getting copper from the wiring oh, to right. sell yeah and turns out in fight or flight i'm a flight uh i was about to run and they were like get on the ground and i was like okay <laughs> and then uh they detained us and were like what were you doing and were we were you like handcuffed? no 
not yeah. even, but we were just like, we were White exploring. White female privilege. Exactly. Did you, did you cry? Did you cry? I did not cry. Did anyone in your crew cry? No, but my friend had a pocket knife. We, it was me and my Smart. friend. There might be crackheads and they're stealing copper. That right. You <laughs> and two shake. guys. <laughs> yeah. And they checked the guys, but my friend was like, I have a pocket knife and they were like okay you're fine <laughs> so she just put it out there she's like yeah. i got weapons they're like all right bitch shut the fuck up <laughs> you yeah, know exactly. uh, but I'm, I'm sure here's the thing though like when i first heard you talk on stage i was like is she trying to like put on a voice like is this like a thing that she's doing and then i was like oh no this is how she talks like i can't imagine someone being like what are you doing and then you responding and then being like she's a criminal get her <laughs> like, <laughs> and like i'm sorry yeah, they're like no you're not we're gonna kill like no they'd be like who's in there like you're where like, are your parents you what know? are you doing just <laughs> yeah. just getting copper wiring for a rainy day and they're like you go on miss <laughs> take your copper and get the fuck out of here <laughs> wait miss is this your catalytic converter <laughs> 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 right, like I could be the last person I'd see. I I don't know. I've I've always felt like. Do you ever feel like you would last in prison? Do you feel like you ever think about that? Like if you would make it there? Um, I just think about how skinny I would get, and that makes me excited because mm. I'm a a picky eater. So I probably would just starve slightly. <laughs> um, just also do a, do a lot of prison yoga. Yeah. A lot of, yeah, a lot of body weight exercises. <sighs> um, I don't know. I think I would do okay. I think about that. I was like, oh, I could just like read and work out. Like I, 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 I never, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was going to do that during the quarantine and never did. Yeah. But I, yeah. yeah, I'd be afraid of a fight. Like anything with razors, I'd be like, oh no. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever <laughs> with razors? Someone <laughs> shaving their legs. It's like, oh no. <laughs> like, I, your legs are beautiful. <laughs> have you ever been in like a fight in real life? Like have you ever been in a fight? No, I've, so well, I guess I don't necessarily want to put this out in the universe, but I've done a lot of like contact sports. Mm. So I think I could be scrappy. Yeah. But no, I've never. But I want to kind of get in a fight. Did you play to field see hockey? How. I did lacrosse in high school. Mm -hmm. Then I did roller derby when I got out of college. And oh, then that's I did. Right. You talked about that on Kelton. Yeah. I did jujitsu like over the pandemic mm -hmm. time so you know i know fighting but you know how, how aggressive does roller derby get <gasps> um it can get fairly aggressive i did it it's like called broken noses or teeth missing anything like it that? definitely could get to that level i did renegade which means like there's no rules there's no penalties <laughs> so like if they see something it's prison rules yeah. yeah there's <laughs> only one rule it's there is no <laughs> exactly <laughs> just murking each other what's up. the goal of or how do you score a goal in uh, yeah how do you win so there's derby? a girl called the jammer and she's the point scorer and then there's a pivot and they're like the pace keeper and then there's three blockers. So the jammer needs to go around the ring and pass the pivot in order to sc uh, score a point. Well, holding the, is it a ball? No, holding? there's no ball or anything. Uh, okay. The referee just like, you have a little star on your helmet that uh, says like, hey, I'm that person. Okay. Um, so they try to like block you the whole time? Yeah. All right. And in Renegade, I'm pretty sure it's like, a minute and a half you have per jam so it's not a lot of time but since there's no penalties there's no game stoppage to like expand the time what was your position i was the jammer i was like oh, shit. so everyone's trying to get you the yeah whole i was 30 pounds lighter so i would get straight armed a lot and just the girls in general lovely people but like at least where i was doing um, roller derby on the bigger side so mm -hmm. uh, Man, so they just like just wreck in your shop you just come through the hole and they're just like yeah no yeah, you know. yeah like, exactly just, so there were no rules but what kind of rules can there be so the only rule was like you can't just like cut through so there's like a track just outlined pretty much and you can't like just skate through yeah, the middle. Yeah, skate through the middle and be like, <laughs> I'm sh here now. But do people now. institute like contact rules or anything like that? Or like not really, which is c can be a problem. Like not when I was there, but I had heard stories of like, you know, after the game, there would be like fist fights in the parking lot because yeah. people would be like, 
you were doing something shady or you kept like picking me out or just like shut shit like that but mm-hmm. like if you wanted to be a bitch like you could trip people right when the whistle blew you could push people down you could like I took a girl was passing me and I took my skates and clamped them around her skates so she just like fell flat Damn, on her face <laughs> girls are savage <laughs> yeah but I just want to point out what girl is there is a name for that move <laughs> I don't I don't know but there should be <laughs> the, the felt and fumble yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah she got felt up <laughs> uh, yeah but like I've always wondered like if one girl's like targeting you the whole time and just fucking your shit up is fighting her in the parking lot like really in your best interest? Like if you couldn't get her on the like skates, do you really want to see her? Like, do, are you about that life? Do you want that smoke? Maybe or is if it you like, roll up with three other chicks. With you. Is it yeah. like more of a skill thing or is it just like being bigger and more like powerful and like stronger is like a bigger thing? Like what? Um, I think usually there was like attitude or words exchanged at that point so mm. then it's like more of a reputation thing the girls i knew in worcester that played uh roller derby were some pretty big girls like they like they they worked at a like a notorious dive bar and there was never a bouncer there because you didn't need one of these chicks <laughs> <laughs> yeah these are kind of yeah, they, were, yeah. they were burly i think that's a good word to Shout describe out to the hotel vernon yeah worcester massachusetts <laughs> got some burly bitches on that thing <laughs> they, they're hefty they were out here they were ready yeah, they were stout. <laughs> like I don't know hey, what, what was, the word uh, to describe them, but they were. They were what was there. your name in roller derby? Leprechaun. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, solid. Yeah. <laughs> would you would you dress up like a leprechaun? No, I never did. We had like uniforms. So what was the team called? We were Orange County Renegade. I'm pretty sure. Mm. I'm trying to think now. What was no, your, what outlaw. Were your teammates' names. We were outlaw renegade. Um. Who were some of them? Uh, Iron Man, <laughs> er, Dukes of Earl. Uh, I thought it would be Dykes of Earl. <laughs> Ooh, Dyke, Dykes of Hazard. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Mustachio, and she would like. It was more about like our announcer would announce like crazy shit mm-hmm. when he would call us out. So like mine would be like. To go look for her like pot of gold under golden showers or like weird shit like that yeah. um my f- mustachio was all about like you know mustache rides and mm-hmm. different stuff did she have a mustache was she italian no she just you liked had, you had a, an irish themed name so I'm like maybe that's what she's going for no it's, they're just like str- I don't know whatever you kind of are into or think is creative Mm -hmm. there was um oh no I can't think of it but like some type of presidential spanking relation name that was really clever that now I can't think of so it just what would your roller derby name be that's a good one I was just thinking about that I was trying Uh, to think of something with like Congo yeah you know mine would probably be um I come in peace and then that would be it. <laughs> you know, like some people, they come, I come in peace, but it would be I C U M, the letter N, and then peace. <laughs> I come in peace. And that would be probably, I don't know why, that's hilarious to me. Okay, you guys don't find it that funny, but that is funny. Yeah, I'm in my head trying to think of my like, very pun long. name the whole time. Fuck <laughs> it. Uh, Slim Reaper is already taken. And you get, ben gave me that. The I Slim like that Reaper, one. A, a basketball player. Oh man, oh, the, the Slim yeah. Reaper is so good for you though. He doesn't go by Slim yeah. Reaper. I just think it's a funny nickname. Yeah. They were just talking about failed Kevin Durant nicknames, and one of them was Slim Reaper. <laughs> oh, he never went by. Slim no, Reaper? He never, oh, then I can like, take it. Yeah, yeah Slim he, Reaper's mine. No. You got it. <laughs> yeah. I feel it's, like it's, you could do something with, like the n-word and then <laughs> you yeah. really catch people <laughs> yeah, i don't know if that you don't this. want more. <laughs> i don't know if you want that responsibility but you know that's the thing about being black is that you have the responsibility of all blackness on your shoulders at all times that's <laughs> anytime they're like this is what black people do this is my example and then i'm just like I'm the only nigga here. It's like I know, and that's uh, <laughs> the extent. Instead of, of Kirby Puckett, you could be Derby Fuckett. Uh, <laughs> all right, <That's> all. <laughs> the na- name game's over. Also, how the fuck do you know Kirby Puckett? <laughs> who is Kirby Puckett? <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked that you know who the name Kirby Puckett. What sport did he play? Kirby, you don't even know. 
I have no idea. Yeah. I was just trying to remind him Derby, and I came up with Kirby, and I'm like, Kirby Puckett's an athlete, I think. Kirby Puckett is an athlete. He was a baseball player for the Minnesota Twins in the early <laughs> 90s and late 80s. I don't know how you know Kirby Puckett. <laughs> it's, a, it's a popular He's a popular dude, I guess. Okay, I guess so. I just didn't think that it was reaching your lexicon of <laughs> very limited sports knowledge. <laughs> yeah, but I pull out references. From he time, does. So. Very random references. And Kirby, Kirby Puckett caught me off guard. How do you know about a Twins player in the 90s? Because I was a sports nerd growing up. Uh, like, okay. super sports nerd. Yeah, but like, even Twins fans don't know Twins history, I, I feel like. I probably know more of most people's sports history than they do. Ben watches uh, Sports Center and Porn. That's it. Okay. That's all he, that's all he know? takes in. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I do not watch Sports Center anymore. <laughs> 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 no. I haven't, watched, I haven't watched porn in a minute. I don't even think about it lately, which is good. Do you, do you have Cable, can you watch Sports Center? Do, can I watch Sports Center? Yeah. No, not on. Sometimes if there's an NBA game, but I realize like how much of a nerd I'm watching. Like it'll be like a Tuesday at like 11 p.m. and I will be watching like a, I don't know, like a Washington Wizards versus the Charlotte Nets for no reason. Like Hornets. <laughs> like I'm just watching this game. I'm like, oh man terrible pick and roll defense and everyone's like why would you no one is watching this game yeah and i'm just like i'd you rather just went to a hornets game in real life too. i did <laughs> to watch Kyrie play he, yeah he showed up in a yamaka so that was cool <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was wearing his bethlehem sixes they really oh my goodness no it was uh yeah it's just random shit i don't know i'm like a sports nerd like i'd mm. rather just have that on in the background while i'm doing something than like anything else yeah like Katie, we brought you on the podcast to talk to about talk some nerdy about stuff. talk about sports. No, to talk yeah. about nerdy stuff, because I uh, saw you on Kill Tony, and you were saying you got a new job working with AI, and we've been talking about AI on this podcast a lot lately. Yes. Um, we had the AI, uh, we've been playing with ChatGPT, are you familiar with that? No. It's like an AI chatbot owned by Okay, I have Elon heard Musk. about this. It'll write you like papers, and like all, or it'll write code for you, like all oh, types of stuff. Oh, that's cool. If you prompt it. Yeah, so we had it. Uh, write uh, a promo for the show, which Ben read on the show. Was it good? Did it turn out well? The promo? Yeah. It was, it was quite solid. The, their copyright was a little hacky, but, you know. Okay. Yeah, it is very, like, basic. We had to write John Rice uh, a promotional bio, but, like, we put in, like, <laughs> he's 40 from Seattle, gay, he's a regular on the dating app, Sniffies, and, it said, and then we said <laughs> make it funny, and it said John has more energy than a puppy uh, on Red Bull. No, fail. <laughs> but I feel like that came directly from Elon Musk's brain. Yeah. He's like, this is funny. You know what's funny? Elon Musk is writing all of the <laughs> jokes on chat. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. This is why Twitter and Tesla are failing. Elon, <laughs> Elon's this, too busy writing jokes on exactly. chat. GT. This app is failing. Yeah, chat GPT is at capacity right now. I was going to have it write interview questions for you, oh. so I don't have to do any work. That would have been smart. But uh, what's the AI that you're working with? Um, it is going. It's AI for uh, like phone ordering for fast food restaurants. Oh, okay. So not that exciting. For calling or for like an like an app like for Uber calling. Eats? Okay. Yeah. So there's like voice re recognition. Mm hmm Yeah. So they it like introduces itself to you and mm -hmm. says a name and it sounds fairly human and then it will. Like read is it a you? male or a female? I don't know if it switches, but when I called it, it was a female. Mm -hmm. And then it will read you the menu or ask you what you want. It'll be like, do you want to order or do you want to hear the specials? And then, you know, you're is like. Is it kind of like when you try to call a pharmacy now? Or you try to call anything customer <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh. Um, but the, like, exciting part that I'm, like, you know, we're going to be living in the Jetsons is they want to go into the drive through, mm -hmm. like get in that kind of thing, which I think would be cool. Yeah. Hopefully it can understand me better than most of the people that work <laughs> in drive throughs right now. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. And oh. I'll probably be able to understand the AI way better than I can. The people that work. True. There. Yeah. Am I, I like very rude too. I mean, I used to work at fast food and I wasn't like <laughs> the nice. Some guy flipped out at me. I was working the front counter at McDonald's on the highway. And I just said like, hey, what can I get for you? And he's like, good morning. And I was like, dude, come on. Yeah. What are we doing here? Straight look at, to look, business. Look at where we both are right now. <laughs> I always think that I do that all the time on like instant message. I just like say what I want. And people are like, hey. 
hey, how are you? And then <laughs> answer my question. I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I should be approachable. <laughs> That's, I, I fail on dating apps because I'm very, like, uh, tes- uh, textic, I guess. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, hello, would you like to go on dates? <laughs> Does Tuesday work for you? Thank you. See you then. (laughs) I like that you like have a plan in place already. Yeah. You try to get to it as quickly as possible because people are flaky on the app. Exactly. I don't really like how they always try to make AI human. Like let AI be like a fucking machine. Like I don't have to have somebody that sounds like a human answer my order. You more comfortable as like, hello, what would you like? No, I don't want it to even ask me. I want a sign that says push button for your order. And if I want a number four, then I fucking push a number four. No, but Katie services, you're calling like a delivery service, like a pizza restaurant or something. Yeah. Be like, press number four to order number four. And then I'll press four. Yeah. I don't want this thing to fucking, I'd rather talk to a, like a menu where I just choose items than like a person trying to be a human but can't have human interactions. Like when I'd be like, please wait one second for the next person. In the meantime, I'm like, motherfucker, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that more than anything. Like give me a fucking menu that I know is a fucking machine, not a but fucking it's, machine. That still to be sounds person. robotic. It would be more human like it was like <coughs> Please wait a moment. Anyway, how is your day going today? (laughs) That would freak me out. (laughs) I can't stand that shit. They're they're trying to make it. They don't do that. What's up? They're not doing that. They're trying to make it do that shit. Are they, Katie? Is that does yours have a? I don't know. We'll see once. Like, does it have the boyfriend experience? That'd be cool. (laughs) Maybe I should. I should implement that. (laughs) I can write jokes for it and be like, while people are waiting, we can give them a joke. (laughs) (laughs) I just wait. I can't wait till they give you like. Now you can get the black woman at the DMV experience. <laughs> That's going to be top notch. Oh, yeah. If I could choose my race and gender when I yeah. call up, that would be wonderful. You know? <laughs> just, Based on goal. your race and gender, we want, assigned you this one. I want sassy black female, please. <laughs> like the chicks at the, what's that place in Chicago? The Wiener Circle. Ooh. You ever heard about that yes. place? Yeah. The black women that like roast you the yes. whole time. They're like, what do you want, motherfucker? Hurry the fuck up. What are you stupid? I want AI to do that to me. That'd be cool. It's like that place in uh, they have one of those like Dick Slash Resort in Boston, I think is like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do that and they have one of those out here too where the people just treat you like dicks and shit. Yeah. That's like a thing. Where's That's the place fun. out here? I think it's called Dick Slash Resort. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think it's in Austin. I think it's in Texas somewhere, like Houston. Oh, yeah. Houston. Probably Dallas or something. Yeah, there's a lot more things out there. I didn't realize that Austin was like the little brother to all of those cities in Texas for the longest of time. Until very recently, Austin's trying to like grow up. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up, Austin. Go back to being fucking weird in your hippie Austin quarter. Austin had yeah. its moment like last year. I think yeah. it's uh, trying to kind of fade <laughs> out right It now. is. It is slowly phasing out. And I feel like... Now I feel like more people I find are leaving Austin than coming to Austin. I mean, people are still coming, but I right. notice a lot of people are now leaving Austin. Mm-hmm. Like, even people that were just like, oh, I'm so hyped to be here. And then, like, it's been like a year. They're like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Tim Dillon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he still has a property. He's not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> property values. They're That's going what you got to do. Well, he property. also lived in the Burbs, so, like, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the burbs are different. Yeah, he's like very far away from the airport and like yeah. everything. Yeah. He's like, I lived in Westlake in a mansion and I hated it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like you were never downtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that is like or you go to Rogan's studio, which I think is out in the woods somewhere too. Yeah. I think it's like on his property mm-hmm. in Westlake or Lakeway or one of those fancy places. Yeah, Westlake and Lakeway. That's where the that's where the bread is at in Austin. If Lakeway is hella expensive. Yeah, I remember driving into Lakeway like, oh shit, things are different over here. Yeah, yeah Lakeway's definitely different. I know some people that lived in Lakeway and I pulled up to the house. I was like, oh, oh, this this is what we're doing. Okay, this is mm-hmm. this is yeah. how we feel. Like, yeah, I talked exactly. to some kid. His parents were like renting a house out there. It was like five thousand dollars a month or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, the blue hair definitely fades out pretty fast yeah. once you get out there. <laughs> I like the audiences outside of Austin, Texas, because they're like real people. Yeah. <laughs> they're not like young and stupid. It is very weird. Austin has a very specific type of audience in terms of like everyone here is like young feeling. Like if they're older, they're trying to be hip, you know, like so it feels very young. and like. What are you trying to say, dude? I don't get uh, Yeah, you, know, you got about? guys that are like 35 still wearing skinny jeans. And like, that's bro. fine. That's completely fine. <laughs> yeah. If they look good on you, that you should wear them. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's why I'm never leaving Austin. <laughs> I can't afford to buy new pants or try out a new style. Jesse's you know? found his people. Yeah, I'm, I'm locked in over here. Dude. <laughs> Got that long-term lease. Are you from Austin, Katie? No, I'm from Orange County, California, but I've been here for eight years. So, mm-hmm. so I you feel moved like here before the rush. Yeah. Have you noticed like changes like with the new Austin comedy scene versus the old comedy scene? Uh. You've been doing yes comedy, and no. what, four Three years? going on four years. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't like super connected to the old Austin comedy scene before the world shut down. Uh, I was doing it like... Sporadically. Yeah, recreationally is that's what I was going to use. Was. But like, I don't think that's the right term. But um, I don't know. I would just say I felt like... N- I understand, but it was like a little bit more clickish than it is now. But when you first moved to Austin, did people tell you you missed the boat? Because I feel like people do that every few years in Austin. Like, oh, you just moved here. You should have been here five years ago. But everyone says that every five years. Yeah. I mean, yes and no. They were like, it was so much better and weirder and cooler. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. But. I don't, do I need all of that in my life? Uh, unclear. <laughs> <laughs> when so, was that? Like 2014, 15? Yeah, 2014. Uh, but when I moved here, like all these nice ass apartments that are around, like were just little Mexi Marts with um, ladies of the night hanging outside of them. So that was fun. Yeah, I heard uh, Riverside used to be more like ratchet back in the day. Yeah. Like we still have a Planned Parenthood and... Uh, like a Chinese food restaurant next to a shitty arcade. Right. Like, and there's remnants. Yeah. <laughs> you still have, yeah, the Planet Fitness and all that stuff. So. Yeah. I love the, all those remnants of hood. Like, you're just like. Yeah, Dee Dee's discount. Yeah. It's still, still pretty ratchet Exactly. Over there. Certain things that you just know. You're like, oh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> there's a dollar store. There's a Chinese ML- restaurant. MLK's all like high rise apartments yeah. now, too. True. Uh, not all of it yet, but yeah, MLK's gotten like that. Yeah. Yeah. The streets are still pretty, like, uh, the street, like, uh, the physical streets are terrible on <laughs> Martin Luther. <laughs> 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 they, haven't, they haven't fixed that up yet. They haven't gentrified the pavement yet. Which, like, we'll get to it. That shit is crazy because it's in every city. Like, no matter what city you go in, you can find an MLK Boulevard and you're like, if I follow this down, I will find black people. <laughs> like, they're going to be, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find the hood eventually if I follow MLK in any city in America yes. you go to. Mm-hmm. You've never been to MLK and you're like, oh, wow, this is a very affluent suburb area. Like, it's never one yeah. time happened. Worcester changed one of its streets to Martin Luther King just like in the last like decade or so. <laughs> just, like <laughs> so yeah, just like, yeah, this is MLK now. We're like, I don't even remember what it used to be anymore. It's where the Palladium is. I think that's like on Emily. Really? Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> we need one in here. Mm-hmm. We're going to put it the sketchiest street in Worcester. We just throw it right it, here. It's not though. It's where like the DCU center is. It's like a lot of businesses and it's nice. Well, anyway. that's it's nice. Not, yeah. it, but, but no, that park in the middle of that thing right by the Capitol building, that park is hella sketchy. Yeah. That part is so, that that park is the sketchiest spot in Worcester. True. Like you, I used to work right across from that in the middle of the day and I'd be like, the fuck is happening in this fucker <laughs> in daylight yeah like bro why like it, it was the epitome of fuckery in worcester was that park right there and mm-hmm. and, and they switched mlk to be right there coincidence yeah. maybe but if you follow it down to the other parts of it kind of if you go down towards uh the university down that way mm-hmm. it gets pretty sketchy that way yeah yeah the the tents are starting to pop back up in Austin. They yeah. are. Shout out to that. I like. It's nice to see them try, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the city did last year because we moved here in 2021. Right. And like all of Riverside was like a tent city. Oh, yeah. And then underneath 35 was like absolute chaos. Totally. That whole parking lot. I know. Lot. You I couldn't was, park there ever. I, I mean, no offense to the homeless, but. I always thought that was crazy when you drive down Riverside and people are paying like 2400 a month for a one bedroom and you just look out to homeless people. So like I get why they did it. But yeah, I don't know where they went. But that's a good question. It's like, where did they go? What did they do? I took Old Dwarf here and the old um, Sonic is now just like a tent city, which is I'm like, cool. Like, <laughs> go, you guys are building community. Yeah, put it over in Ben's neighborhood, yeah. not in mine. <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, Austin sketchiness, I feel like, is... Did you see the rise of, like, the tents pop up? Was it pre-2020? Yeah. 
Uh, no, it was about like 2020 ish. Cause they, Austin was like, we're progressive. We're going to, they had laws that were like, you can't have tents. And then Austin was like, no, that's not fair. These people are living out on the street. They should have protection. Mm -hmm. So we voted for a law that would allow tents to happen. Uh, And then the homeless people were like, fuck yes. And then we were like, oh, we, (laughs) we did a bad thing. Not definitely the tents, just a view to the people. We fucked up. (laughs) We thought you guys would move in together, consolidate. (laughs) (laughs) We really expanded this operation. (laughs) so yeah it was was out of control we were still like yeah we're moving here it's it's lit down here let's go (laughs) if all else fails i'm just grabbing a tent (laughs) we were gonna consolidate our tent though we were gonna share one big tent (laughs) yeah we just put sheets up in the middle (laughs) and on the inside yeah some people when we first moved here some people had some ridiculous tent setups I remember one dude, he had solar power in his tent. And I was like, bro, Ooh. what? There was a barber just sl- chopping hair up on the fucking tent. He had his own yeah. little makeup shit. Like, no, those guys go from like camp to camp and help homeless people. Bro, uh. no, no, no. There was one guy who had in his little encampment, like a little booth set up. It looked like he had posted up shop there, and he'd been there for a uh, minute. Okay, yeah. And I was like, damn, this dude's doing – he's doing numbers. We did see like, the solar panel, and I was like, don't you need to install that? And someone's like, no, if you plug something into that solar panel, it will work. And oh, I was like, that's cool. That's pretty tight, but where did you get that solar panel? Yeah, bro, this dude's like, <laughs> right? don't worry about it. Dude. He's like, the he same place off. I got my TV. Bro, what? Yeah. <laughs> These guys are out here. A truck fell off the back of – It fell off the back of the truck. What part? Wait, so you grew up in L.A. in Cali, Orange County? Orange County, which is an hour south of L.A. and an hour north of San Diego. So then what, like, how did you end up in Austin? Like, at some point where you're just like, I want to leave here? Or you just like, what yes. was in Austin? Um, I'm an only child. Mm. And so I feel the need to be away from my family <laughs> <laughs> for a large amount of time. Um. I went to college in Arizona, moved home for a year, and was deciding. I went to NAU. No. Northern Arizona? Yes. That's in a, what, Flagstaff? Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I almost went there. ASU is the, like, I guess everybody now smokes weed, but that was, like, the party school, Mm -hmm. alcohol. NAU was, like, the party school, like, weed and Uh, psychedelics and stuff. mm, Did you do any of that out there? No. Well, I mean, I like started smoking weed in college, but still have not experimented with psychedelics, but I'm leaning more towards it. Mushrooms are everywhere in Austin, but I've yet to do them here. I just don't know like how to buy them or what to say or how much to take. I say, I think you could probably go on stage and say, Hey, I want mushrooms. I want mushrooms. And someone's going to bring nobody gives me free drugs. Like the amount of times I've been in Creek and people have been like, Oh, I just got offered Coke in the bathroom. And I'm like, hello, I'm in the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Yeah, no, I drugs are easy. Oh wait, easy to find here. I did mushrooms once in Austin. Someone gave me a microdose capsule. It was like a point two. Oh. We haven't done mushrooms together. That's um, right. We were together. We, I, feel, I feel like we've purposely taken mushrooms together. You and I have done mushrooms together in Massachusetts, but not in Austin. You guys, it sounds like we all need to do mushrooms after this. No, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, we'll do our Patreon episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a weird episode. We're just... Yo, so this episode. <laughs> I feel like the camera is talking to me. It has a face. Oh, shit. I don't know. Hang around some of the bands that hang around the comics. Those guys always have mushrooms. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. And then. You can find mushrooms. I don't know how. I don't know. When people are like, oh, it's so hard to find drugs, I'm always like, I feel like drugs find me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll just be hanging out, and someone will be like, yo, you looking for something, man? I got you. Bro, I was literally just sitting here on my phone, not yeah. mind, minding my own fucking business. And people would be like, y'all, let me know, dog. I got you, whatever. I've been offered ketamine the time. many times. Yeah. Out here. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't been offered ketamine. <laughs> nope, not offered. I do. I would be interested in ketamine therapy, mm-hmm. but I don't. Ketamine. That's what a lot of people oh. claim to be doing out here. But <laughs> they're just doing no. ketamine. <laughs> so, like, I'm prescribed this nasal spray. They're like, how many times are you supposed to hit it? They're like, not this many times. <laughs> <laughs> No, I need Basically. somebody to watch me. Yeah. And to help me, but no. 
I don't know. Let me see the the, the vape. I don't yeah. even like like being on stage too high. So no, I'm not really a fan no. of that. No, that's not the same. Maybe late though. night at the creek, I'll let it go a little bit. I think I've been on Molly at the creek on stage. Oh, that's fun. That yeah. sounds like a fun experience. It was okay. But when I when I do drugs, I have a hard time like remembering my jokes though. Same. Yeah. But back to my story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so you went to NAU. Yes. And then after school, I moved home for a year and was either going to go into the Peace Corps or move away again. And then... What does the Peace Corps do? Um, They help, like, create... Ki- not... I was going to... Like, infrastructure, but not, like, physical infrastructure. So, like, um, what I wanted to do was create... They have, like, a communities program kind of in Eastern European eastern europe where like girls after school you can like (coughs) they have programs to like be like independent ladies let's Mm. get it um and help with homework or a lot of countries they teach english um or set up like agriculture and wells and that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so it's like it's different and they try to get people that have had a career in different things and help develop but yeah, it, and develop it's a, communities and Yeah, cities. it's a two-year uh, commitment. Do they tell you about, like, where you're going to be, like, going beforehand? Or is it like you have to sign up for two years and they just pick a place where they send you? So you sign up and you give your preference. Mm-hmm. But, like, straight out of college, they're pretty much, like, you're going to teach English. Like, yeah. we don't have faith in your <laughs> skills <laughs> levels at all. Yeah. Coming straight out of college. So that's kind of what they told me. And... I met a guy the other day at my rock climbing gym who lived in China teaching English for two years. Oh, cool. That sounded pretty cool. One of my friends went to Thailand. He did that in like Phuket, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And it's like one of those like beach resort towns. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I should have went to go. I tried to do that. Do you need an English degree to do that? Or you need a college degree? degree. Just a college degree. Speak English fluently. Yeah. Damn. All right. If comedy <laughs> fails, I'm just going to go teach English. Do it. Phuket. I almost did. I almost went to China. <laughs> the lady messaged me back and they're like, China may not be the best place for you to go right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> with uh, some of the relations that they have with African Americans. Yeah. Here's some other pro- spots that you may go to. But me, white American guy, I could be a doctor out there. Bro, <laughs> you straight up. You <laughs> I put on a lab coat, they'll let me do surgery. Nah, you it's put like on the opposite of here where they're like, in his country, he was a doctor. Yeah. Now he's a janitor. They're like, he was a janitor. Now he's a doctor. Bro, you pull up in that bitch. Straight up. You put on a seat. You're a CEO in a suit, bro. Like, they, they did that, uh, that that Vice documentary thing on there. Yeah. About white white guy. guys for hire. <laughs> yeah, just being white in, in China. And they would just like have this guy who like... They had they were opening a brand new like state of the art medical center, and he was the keynote speaker. He's not even a doctor. He's not, <laughs> he has no degrees. Just this white guy, and he goes in a suit. He wrote a speech that he you put on a lab coat. Yeah, he, oh he just and he wrote a speech from Wikipedia. Yeah, <laughs> and, and doctors are all in there taking notes on this guy's talk yeah, as he like That's opens crazy. it up. I'm like. That would be the life. This sounds like a Nathan Fielder sketch. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy because now, like, anything that, like, I would think is so outlandish mm-hmm. is not even a sketch anymore. It's just, like, the real world we live in. Like, the it's gotten... I feel like a lot of people felt that way when, like, Trump was in office. Like, all the headlines are, like... This is straight from like Saturday Night Live headlines, like Weekend Update, and this is just real life. Like, yeah. where do the jokes go? When yeah, there's like, that page, Not the Onion. And it's, like, <laughs> things you think would be a joke. That's crazy. So you didn't go into the Peace Corps? No. Well, I my cousin was like, my friend has this apartment opening in New York. Do you want to move? Mm-hmm. And so I said, yeah. And then like a week later, the Peace Corps was like, we placed you. And I was like, ooh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where they placed you? Um, West Africa. <laughs> oh, ooh. shit. That would have so. been different. Hood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little south, but You're a little yeah. south Africa. Yeah, I'm south. I'm a jaded white lady that was like, I've already been to Africa, so <laughs> no thank you. Have you been to Africa? I have, yeah. Where'd you go in Africa? I've been to Morocco, That's Namibia, a cool spot. South Africa, mm. Malawi. Why have you been to so much Africa? Is this all one trip? 
I think that's all my Africa. Was it multiple trips or all at once? Uh, multiple. I did semester at sea in college, so I yeah, hit. Once you go, <laughs> once you go, <laughs> <laughs> you keep going back and back. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes. Um, and then. Uh, summers between freshman and sophomore year of college, I went and built schools there for two weeks. So, so it's kind of Peace Corps-ish. Yeah. What was the coolest spot in Africa that you went to? Um, Cape Town is really cool and dope, and everybody should check it out. Yeah. I, I also really hate when white people have more experience about Africa than I do. <laughs> 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 it's just it's not even like a it's just like a visceral you, like you've never been back, right? You know, so like when I went to uh, I was in a, I went to go visit my uncle in uh, California, and he like had all these teachers that he like work with, and a bunch of them like spent a bunch of time in Africa, and they're like, oh yes, yeah, that time in the Congo. I'm like, bitch, you're telling me about the Congo. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, yes, we were there. You remember Okonkwo? <laughs> it's like, oh, motherfucker. This <laughs> bitch has white women telling me about Africa and speaking the gala to me. And I'm like, I don't know why this irks me so much, but it does. No, I... No, not too much. I you would learn understand language why. Out there? No, I'm so bad with <laughs> languages. Mm-hmm. Like, not my skill set. Plus, th- like, most of them speak English already. Right. So yeah, when I went to Europe, they were like, they speak English here. Don't even bother <laughs> trying to learn Dutch. They're like, you're never gonna get it. <laughs> They're like, you, they just let you try. They're like, let's nice try, dude. I didn't try. I didn't <laughs> try to learn, learn one phrase. Except I feel like all the like, like Spain and Portugal, they are like, no, we're sticking to our languages. Yeah, they speak Spanish there. So well, Portuguese, I think the French but, might be like that too. Yeah. The French are the worst. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely the worst. They're Canadian fucking... French are the worst. Quebec oh. now, you have to speak some French out there. Really? For real. It's yeah. crazy. They make you do that? They like make you speak French out there? Like they won't speak English? Yeah, like every business has to be like French speaking. That's... And like all the signs, everything's in French. You're in yeah. Canada. Why do you care? <laughs> it, yeah. I In New York, the company I worked for, we had a factory in Quebec City, which is like kind of letter kenny-esque but french canadian mm-hmm. and yeah we, we can communicate with probably 75 percent of the people because they only spoke french <laughs> i bet you those motherfuckers went home and spoke english they only spoke french to <laughs> <laughs> they just refused <laughs> it was like we will not speak uh, english for your american <laughs> fucking hassle they go home and get wine drunk and just start talking <laughs> <shit> <laughs> that's you know. what they do you <laughs> it's just french people get drunk and start speaking english mm-hmm. that'd that's be awesome thing. Do you think everyone, do you think like French people, like we do like a oh, oh, French accent, oh, like we fuck with them? Do you think they do the same thing with like American accents? Yeah, they're yeah hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they always do the Valley Girl. That's like the common one. Yeah. It's like every British person can do like an American accent. They probably do Kardashian vocal fry now. Yeah. That's replaced Valley Girl. Super vocal fry or um like country accents, like country one. Like, well, howdy, I'm from America. Was Valley Girl a thing when you were in OC or was it all <coughs> vocal fry? at that point i mean i say like like it's nobody's business so what's the difference between vocal fry and valley girl like i i guess i haven't been able to distinguish the difference vocal fry is just like this and i'm like so chill like i'm super calm where valley girl is more of oh my god a lot of up speak yeah what Jesse saying? Yeah, <laughs> put an exclamation point at that. Everything you say, because like, have you ever seen Clueless? Years since I watched Clueless. That's Valley Girl yeah. and Kardashians is the new the new version where it's just Velcro. But well, she's from Beverly Hills. True. I've never watched the Kardashians. Is that like I lump all like rich white girls together in California? <laughs> you're, you're all from the Valley to me. We are <laughs> rich white. Yeah, that's true. Calabasas. Um. What about what were you asking? Wait, about so then you ended up in uh, New York. We're, we're on the Katie York? Felton journey. We're in New yeah. York now. Yeah, we're in New York. Yeah. <laughs> you went in to Africa. New York. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I moved to New York because I was like, I'm going to be an a- advertising account executive. Look at me go. Strong, independent woman. And then that really failed. And I lived there for two years. Did you do comedy out there? I did not. Did you work for any ad agencies? I did not. So what did you do while you were out there? I worked for an awards company. Like what? Like like the Grammys? No, that'd be cool. Um, but <laughs> you work for Academy Awards. Like what awards? Um, just so when banks like 
uh, do mergers and acquisitions and uh, public offerings and all these types of things. They help the companies accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And as part of their, like, look at what we did, they make a little award that talks about it. And my company made that. But you my make like trophies and ribbons and things? No. Or you just coordinate ceremonies? Just like loose site things that people put on their desk to be like, on uh, this date, we trophies. went public. <laughs> but they did call them trophies, but yeah, it's not like, like a so. bowler trophy. But it looks like a piece of glass with the letters yeah. inside of it. Yeah, those are, those are fancy. I like that. They ain't got no awards for that. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get Trophies. one of those for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. We should. We, should we, we need a 200 subscriber Lucite yes. trophy. <laughs> I can hook you up. I'll reach out. Yeah, put us in contact. some people please. in the trophy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My big claim to fame was um, we. I started like doing the one-off weird things and my friend had another friend that worked for this music company and they did an awards night Mm -hmm. and uh one of the awards went to beyonce probably it doesn't like live with her probably lives with somebody else probably lives in the trash yeah (laughs) and then skrillex and i was like cool hell yeah that's dope (coughs) but and I got to go to the ceremony and they gave out free phones. That was like the Whoa. best. Free phones. Yeah. So you just showed up and you got an iPhone or what? Not Samsung. an iPhone. Oh, yeah. Samsung. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> Samsung. Just Samsung. Of piles of those things, dude. <laughs> that was my most like I'm living the good life in New York. So then you're just Did you get like a spa gift gift uh, certificate or anything? No, that yeah. would have been super cool. See, that's why you got to sleep with Derek Jeter. He used to give out gift baskets with iPhones in them. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so ge- Derek Jeter was giving out legit gift baskets. I was trying to fuck Jeter. I was trying to, <laughs> like, word, I need, yeah. I, need, I need to update I my would, phone. I think he was dating some famous model when I lived there. Yeah, that so. checks out. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but. What year were you in uh, in New York? 2012 to 14. Mm-hmm. So Sandy, right? Hurricane yeah. Sandy. You yeah. lived through that? I, li- I survived. You're, you're a fucking survivor. You're so brave. Nemo. Nemo. I did it. You didn't flood it out? You were uh, higher up? No. It didn't even hit like our side of the island. What part of New York were you in? Manhattan. Oh, okay. So you were like, yeah, you were in the shits. Which is crazy because like I, until I went to New York, I didn't realize that, like, New York City is a very small portion of New York. Yes. Like, you're just, oh, you just enter New York, you cross a couple of bridges, that's fucking everybody. And then you go, like, outside of that thing, and you're, like, in the middle of fucking nowhere. I didn't right. know Manhattan was an island until, like, 10 years ago, probably. Like, I thought, like, Brooklyn and everything was just all, like, together. Yeah. I'm like, why does it take so long to get from place to place? And I'm like, oh, because like... There's one fucking bridge yeah. that yeah. goes there. And then yeah. everyone's on that fucking bridge at the same goddamn yeah. time I every thought day. everything was just so close together. And it's like, no, it's very spread out. No. It's hard to get to. No. Yeah, yeah, it is annoying. Well, I stayed at my friends in Bushwick. And then I like got locked out of his apartment. <gasps> and the only other person I knew was in Manhattan. Oh, for, no. So like, I just like asked somebody how I... I looked it up on my phone before it died. And just got on a train and just like rode it. And it was like, it took so long. It was like, why is this taking so fucking long? (laughs) You went from like super outside to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's crazy. That's a track. And And then I just happened to remember where he lives from like the time I was there before. And then some guy was walking into his apartment. So then I just like walked in after I'm impressed. Yeah. (laughs) But then was your friend like freaked out because you just showed up? He knew I was in town that weekend. I think I saw him the night before, but he didn't know I was about to show up. Okay. Surprise. Yep. I was just like, yo, what's up, dude? I'm locked out of Joe's apartment and my phone's dead. Can I chill here? And he's like, yeah, I'm playing Grand Theft Auto. And I was like, sick. <laughs> so I just like, t- I charged my phone. I was like, Joe, I'm over here now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you out, for- Joe. I'm over here now. <laughs> Whatever, Joe. Uh, it's like, I, I do love that aspect about New York that you can't really get anywhere else. It's like, one, just being able to hop on a train. It does take a little bit of a long time, but... Like, you think about how much distance you're covering. Like, Austin is kind of spread out, but it's pretty small. Like, everything's, like, 10, 15-minute drive away. Like, nothing really takes any time to get to. Mm-hmm. Only just traffic is the only thing that adds time to it. But like, New York, there's always something popping. You can just hop on a train and be, it's like you're on a whole different thing when something's popping out. Versus here, it's like 9 p.m., Whataburger's the only thing open still. Like, mm. that shit happens quick out here. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how just small, like. There's, like, two streets yeah. you can hang out on. 
Yeah, yeah. So not on six, you're on rainy if you're not in it. Like we're not really in the nightlife culture, though. We were. We we do we went Ben's to like trying to be yeah no, I, I I mean I was in the streets <laughs> I was in the streets for a minute and I was yeah. out in these streets yeah you would find random fucking bars and shit or after parties and yeah I w- people would keep a bar open late or something oh like you yeah you you can do this but you find out like you're just in the same places <laughs> it's just like one little block of all these things yeah. like there's not really much outside of that yeah you're right. still like a street off of Sixth Street or something like yeah <laughs> you're like oh shit we went to the spot you're like oh no what bitch I'm on Ninth like we didn't go anywhere yeah. All right. But yeah. also when you live in cities like that, like you, it's the same as far as you just go to the same five bars that you know versus really trying to venture out because well, yeah, you're not going to take headache. a 45 minute yeah. train ride somewhere. Well, I mean, that's just, that's a decision. Though. That's like the option to make that decision. Like New York gives you that option here. You True. can't just be like, yo, I'm going to go have a wild ass night in Bronx and then just take a fucking 45 minute train to get there. You know, you're just mm-hmm. like, yo, I'm going to go to the other side of fifth street you, know you don't what I'm go like, drive to waco and be like i'm here to party <laughs> i tried one time <laughs> one time you ever been to waco <laughs> no one's in waco trying to party the biggest the most populated part of waco is the traffic on i-35 there's no <laughs> one else in waco is that baylor in waco Outside of Waco? I don't know. The I just university? know Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah, there's no Baylor's around there, which, as a 32-year-old man going around college towns looking to party, is a bold strategy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm not against it. Shout out to Leonardo DiCaprio. Do your thing. Yeah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know? You know what? Fuck it. Let's go to Baylor, Jesse. Yeah. Let's, let's go in there. You want to go to some college parties? Let's pop. We went to College Station, and Ben got called the N-word. Uh, like 10 minutes in there. Like <laughs> not even, oh like, God. five minutes. <laughs> we there, just yeah. got out of the car. And they're like, what up, Negro? I was like, fuck, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> what? I was like, yeah, shout out to Texas. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, uh... Mary Catherine Bryant was like, oh, we got to walk down this one alleyway. It's so cool. So we walked down this. I figured if there was like rocks on the ground or bottle something. Caps. Bottle caps. Like bottle caps were on the ground. Alley. Oh, yeah. okay. So we're walking through there and then some old drunk dude with like one eye just starts yelling. What's up, my <laughs> Negro? Yeah, so yelling. I was like, hey, he said, come back here. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> we just kept I was, like, I was like, damn, this is what happens when you leave Austin. You're in Texas. That's yeah. a different yeah. place. That is true. And they were like marquee signs that said like, take your damn mask off or something. And it oh, was like no. misspelled and everything. <laughs> like, now we're in Texas. Baby. Yeah. Hell yeah, buddy. We just shot guns for fun. That is where, yeah, A&M is. So mm-hmm. it's an interesting. Yeah. yeah. MK is in, uh, she's a. Uh, an Aggie alum, so she was excited oh, to be there. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're in New York and you've been there for two years, and you're like, yeah, things aren't going the way you plan. No, I'm very sad. I only know like six people, mm-hmm. and so then I'm like, I'm gonna move, and I want to move to another city, but not so big or expensive as New York, and where I know more than like three people so mm. austin fit that criteria and so i moved sight unseen never visited you had college friends here or something i had two college friends here and then a group of friends from back home like one is my best friend from high school and then she got me into roller derby and some roller derby ah, people okay yeah. that's dope well, so at what point did you like yo are all those people still here yeah Nice. <laughs> they are yeah and expanded like the i moved in with my good friend from college and her boyfriend at the time they're married with a child uh and everybody else has gotten married and or had children mm-hmm. then and then at what point were you like maybe i should start comedy you know like what was going on there like, i felt like sad in new york would be the time to start comedy you're like yeah i true I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't think like, I always had an appreciation for comedy, but I feel like all of my groups of friends were always really funny. So I wasn't like, I'm the standout funny person in this group of people. We would just like riff together. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved here, people at my office job were like, oh, you're funny. Like you should do comedy and i was like Ooh, you're one of those stories what no <laughs> but like keep it coming <laughs> and 
Have like, you ever been to a comedy show before you did comedy? Yes. I've been to a lot of comedy shows. And like my dream in high school was to be on SNL. So mm-hmm. like, you know, comedy dreams, but never really pursued it. But I had been to one stand up show. No, actually maybe two or three before I started. My first one though, my girlfriend bought me tickets to see Steve O do stand up comedy. Oh no. On his first big tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a Steve O super fan, like Jackass super fan. Yeah. And then I saw Bo Burnham and Anthony Jeselnik all in the same venue in Boston. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That so it. you how did you know about comedy if you hadn't really seen it? I mean, I guess it's in the ether, but... I was a but stand-up nerd since I was a kid. Like, oh, okay. All I watched was, like, Comedy Central and listen okay. to albums. So you hadn't seen it live, but no. seen stand-up. Yeah, that's what I meant. I hadn't seen it live. Gotcha. Like, barely. But I didn't know that, like, open mics were a thing until I was, like, 29. Yes. Same. Yeah. I don't, like... I had been to the... I lived on Riverside, so I had been to the Buzz Kill show. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were having a mic, but like usually as a person outside of comedy, if you're not dating a comic, like it's not like you're like, let's go see an open mic or even know where the open mics happen. Some people are into it. I'll see girls on dating apps be like, let's go to a comedy open mic or and like judge all the comics. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad first date idea. No, I didn't know that was a thing. Comedy is a bad first date because you can't talk to the other person. Well, you're not supposed True. to talk to the other person. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if you go to Buzzmill, you can sit like at a back table and be like, yeah. terrible. Oh, I went one time, Ben. Were you there? These people had open mic comedy bingo cards that they made. They weren't comics. <gasps> yes. I know who you're talking about. And I looked and... A lot of the spaces were were marked, except one that said good joke. Uh (laughs) And it was like 15 people deep. And I looked over. I'm like, what the fuck is this about? (laughs) This is bullshit. The 50 comics, you haven't heard one good joke? Come on. You guys are cunts. That is pretty funny. I haven't seen those people. That's hilarious. I was like, this is complete bullshit. (laughs) But like bad joke was like like, clearly X'd out. (laughs) I haven't. Or racist joke. It was a very very woke card. Yeah. (laughs) I, nev- I, I called him out on stage. Did, did yeah. they- <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, what comic am I? Like the seventeenth? I was like, these people have open mic bingo. A good joke is not. <laughs> <part>. <laughs> it's funny. That's great. I've never been to an open. I've never been to like a comedy show until I started doing like open mic comedy. I'd never. I still like even it's probably years into comedy before I went to like watch like an actual comic on a show that I wasn't involved. There's like a place where I knew people that were having a show, like outside of the local comedy scene. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird because it's so different. Like when you go watch somebody that people like paid to go watch versus like if you go watch somebody that people are like, we're just gonna go watch a comedy show and we have no idea who these people are. This is like the brain of men versus the brain of women. Why? Both of you guys are just like I was into comedy, but not enough to go see it live, <laughs> and I'm just gonna do it myself. I know I can do a great job. <laughs> Where I'm like. I've been to like five million comedy shows. I'm analyzing these people and I'm like, can I do it? Well, I mean, like I basically studied it my whole life. <laughs> I mean, I, I, just was see it live. I watched a lot of comedy like like uh, like videos. I'd watch a lot of stand up. Like I right. watched a lot of like Dev Jam and stuff, but I just never watched it live. I just what? always but, I, but it is funny because guys do have that irrational confidence that like that's 90 percent about being a guy is just having I don't know why I believe I can do this. I don't know why I have any confidence whatsoever or any. And what do you have experience. to do? Oh, hang out every night. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be funny. I can do. That. I figure this shit out, dude. I yeah. fucking got this. That's like ninety percent about being a guy. It's just irrational confidence. Like yeah. You just have no reason why you should be as confident as you are in anything. But you look at like anybody, like a successful guy, and you're just like, oh, no, this dude has zero. Like Elon Musk. Zero reason why he should be so confident in what he's doing. <laughs> like, even if he's been a successful, you watch him, you're like, this dude's a fucking nerd. Like, is every dude is just out there, irrational confidence, out the gills. That's ninety percent about being a guy's irrational mm-hmm. confidence. Yeah, that's that's what you need to go talk to a girl. Like, that's anything successful, dude. You imagine the first dude that was like, yo, I'm gonna fucking build a city and become a king. That's a very irrational thought. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna rule all of these people mm. just on pure brawn and brain power alone. Like, what, what, what gave you the ability to think you could do that? Some dude was yeah. like, yeah, I got, I fucking got this. Like, that's that's all being a dude is irrational confidence. Truly, though. But do you like? I the young kids will never know like how 
influential Comedy Central was to like our generation of comedians because mm. I definitely watched that so much. But as a comedian now, do you feel any way about just like watching specials on TV or YouTube because that's like the best show you know that's like the best clip they got versus like knowing now in person like you're i feel like i'm finally Not coming a, well to now this. i know like because i listen to a lot of podcasts too yeah <clears throat> so they'll be like yeah the special wasn't the best show on the tour okay because there's like a different energy to a special too yeah so i realized that watching it like i love tim dylan i've seen him live down here a few times and uh, but his special just doesn't have that energy that like seeing him at the creek of the vulture. Yeah, that's has. true. He he's one of the weird ones where I feel like. But like I'm aware that the it, audience is like weird because they were at a special taping. Right. Um. He does a lot of clubs and well, he shot this in a yeah. theater. You're so. also just like arbitrarily picking a city to do that you've like done well in the past, mm -hmm. but like. And you think t ticket sales will be good, but yeah. I don't know. The more I do comedy, the more I'm like, oh, it's just about like being mediocre and then having some nights that really hit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, am I having the wrong idea about this? Well, it's because every night you never know what's going to be like. It's like you kind of have to decipher. And sometimes you're like, like, for example, some audiences like the other night I did a show in the audience were just like they were not doing any material. But if you did any like crowd work or riffing, they loved it. But like one, you have to a decipher that quickly and B, you have to have then that in your bag and skill set to do. Like it's mm -hmm. like figuring yes. out the right audience for your skill set to have like the best shows. And not every night is going to give you that opportunity. Right. But I feel like someone like Tim Dillon, too, is like. A lot of what Tim Dillon does best, like, is, like, rounding and crowd work and kind of riffing. Like, mm -hmm. that stuff doesn't come off as well in a special as it does, like, when you're in the audience. Especially someone right. like, even, like, Big J. Like, he does all this crowd work stuff. But that doesn't come across as well when you're watching that on a special versus, like, when you were in the room and felt the energy and right. knew everything that was it happening. It still works on a special, but, like, being it, there... Yeah, well, it, just being there live in general. Right. Yeah, it works. It just doesn't work as well. It doesn't work as it doesn't come across as strong as it would otherwise. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. for a lot of that. But mm -hmm. also, do you feel like Austin is more of a crowd work city than Boston, or may just having an experience I together? I feel like a lot of people want to be crowd work comics out here because they're lazy and they don't want to write. You'll oh, see a lot of that at open mics, and it's like. You just don't want to write a joke, and you're like, I want to be a, I want to write on stage and be a crowd work guy. It's like, have you ever written a joke? Interesting. There's a lot of new young comics I'm talking there about. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's part of it. But I do notice a lot of Austin rooms do like if somebody, if they're trying their material and then they're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna do crowd work. They have the best setup the night. Crowd work always works better it because it's in the moment, and people are like, oh, this is like special to us. I what? guess. And like they know you're just coming up with it off the top of your head, so it's like True. way more impressive. And I think what? audiences, like the younger audiences, like when crowd work clips are it, ruining it, a generation they, too. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, True. younger audiences, they don't like material as much. Like they, I've noticed just younger audiences general, they just like the riffing and the crowd work and the moves like random out there stuff. Cause that's of all they're seeing on TikTok. Yeah, then that, Cause exactly. Yeah. That's what they're so used to seeing on all the clips, on all the shows, everything's kind of the and they're like, I'm going to be in, yeah. the, in the clip. Right. Exactly. But they and don't that, understand. We're just clipping that so we can use our actual jokes later. <laughs> 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 no, they don't. But like when you leave Austin, I found you get a lot of different audiences and you usually they're older audiences because Austin like as a city in general is kind of young everyone that lives like in the city is a lot yeah. like younger millennials or whatever Gen Z people are here when I was in Jacksonville I just the material and it works yeah it, it works yeah. on older audiences because yeah. they want to hear material they want to hear well thought out ideas and thoughts like that they don't like and then that's why it's like it's funny because you'll do a show with like some comic that like kills here or has like a bit that murders here in front of like these young like mid late 20s early 30 year olds or whatever Gen Z kids and millennials or whatever then they go do like a middle aged audience you somewhere. go to Georgetown and yeah, bomb your ass and they up. just go bomb because they're like what the fuck are you talking about you talked about jizz and you said jizz splat and that was supposed to be your fucking f killer punchline and they're like yeah. what the fuck are you talking about I bomb about? pretty hard out there yeah and it's just it's a different vibe and that's yeah. just kind of figuring out what that works Katie when uh, when can people see your show where's it at 
Um, will this come out before Thursday? Uh, no, it'll come out next Monday. Okay, Do you have then a regular, like, date come and time? to Last Stand Brewing the second and fourth Friday of the month. Hell yeah, dude. Lipstick. I'm on one of those. Yeah. I think I'm on one of those as you, well. I think you guys are on the same show. Nice, I'm pretty sure you guys nice. are February 24th. Yeah. So Hell yeah. Does time. that sound good? Yeah. Sounds right. It's in my calendar somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> my February is filling up. My January is a little light right now. It's all right. yeah. Start of the new year, baby. You're at the Cap City, hanging out at the door. People can yeah, see you there. can come see me handing out tickets at Cap City. <laughs> Cap City, bitch. Cap, Cap City, bitch. That should be their shit. I should just play should. that everywhere. Cap City remix. Ten, exactly. ten, ten tickets is our limit, bitch. <laughs> 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 two, 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 two. Hell yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us, Katie. Yeah, thanks for is letting it, well, me is be. Is AI going to kill all of us? Answer this question. No, I hope that I become the voice of all AI moving forward. <laughs> yeah. That's my goal. You might be the voice of this podcast. We'll have yeah. you do the intro. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for letting me be a lonely man for a day. No, now we're men's with friends. That's yeah, men's with friends. <laughs> lonely men's, with friends. <laughs> lonely men's plus. Right, bye, guys. Peace.